Hey guys, Steven Bogren here. Pro Physique today. What I want to talk about is cardio or macros. So hey guys, I hope you are all having a wonderful Tuesday. <clears throat> now, I got an email the other day from a client and they said, hey coach, how do you decide whether you should increase calories, like carbohydrates or fats, or decrease the cardio uh, that somebody's doing when they're in a reverse diet? I thought, well hey, this is a great question. Let's discuss a little bit about you know how I kind of go about running reverse diets, recovery diets, whatever you want to call them. Um, essentially getting you back to a place where we're maintaining lower weight, but life is manageable, right? Macros are manageable, cardio is manageable, and we're set up in a good place to, to maybe go into a diet again long term, or at the least to maintain weight. So as usual, my response was, well, it, it depends. Um, there's no one size fits all method for everybody. So we kind of have to be a bit open minded to see how each individual responds and um, sort of go from there, right? So the big thing is we have to see what, which portion is it that's causing them uh, the most issue, right? Which one takes the most discipline for them? Uh, so maybe they're not having issues hitting macros, right? Maybe they're really good at hitting macros, they're still eating very voluminous foods. My camera's doing weird shit over here. Let's see if we can get it back on all Stevie. No. Nope, it's fucked. Um, so maybe that's the problem, right? Maybe the, the, the bigger issue, the bigger uh, determinant of their success right now isn't food, but maybe it's cardio. Maybe um, you live somewhere where it's snowing. You have to go to the gym every day. You don't have the ability to do cardio at your own place. Um, you know, maybe there's just, you have kids and a family and you, you know you're also you're the one that's normally cooking and cleaning and doing it doesn't matter right like so for me i think i hate cardio more than i hate eating less food sometimes right i still have to adult and do all the adult things and cardio takes more time so like for me i would be with you right cardio is the bigger the bigger issue that's what takes more discipline for me to to manage so it might make more sense to for you know someone like you or me to drop cardio down first to a manageable place where it's not overbearing, where I can handle it, right? And then slowly work food up, okay? Now, there's also the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Maybe cardio is not the big deal. Maybe the big deal for me is that I am fucking, I'm ravenous. And this, this tends to be, I think, um, the bigger deal for most people once you, until you get to a point, right? Um, <clears throat> so bringing food back up to a manageable point where it's realistic, you have enough food, you can still eat volume dense, you know, voluminous foods, nutrient dense foods, um, <laughs> um, and then feel full and get through your workouts and things start getting better again there. Um, <clears throat> so I think for me, most people, it's food to a point, cardio, right? Um, but the, the truth of the matter is, again, it's very, very, individually based, right? Some people don't have to do as much cardio to get there as others, right? So maybe food's an easy thing uh, for them to manage, right? That's the easy answer. It just depends on the individual, right? The other thing that we wanna look at in terms of how we're making those changes is how is their weight responding, right? <clears throat> Typically we can make a nice decent jump out um, from the dieting phase in a deficit, right? We already know that. So maybe we go to a refeed day calorie, right? Maybe we, you know, drop something. Maybe we give them a structured diet break and they respond well and we can just stay there, right? So you have a lot of different uh, options in terms of how you want to add calories back in and how you want to drop cardio initially, right? But again, individually based. Some people, they get that, that drop out and they're responding well metabolically, right? Maybe they still dropped weight. So if they dropped weight this week, I know I can make a more aggressive increase to calories or a more aggressive decrease to cardio, right? I don't have to be um, so conservative with the numbers that I hit. Now, 
say they maintained weight, yeah, I probably need to be a little bit more conservative than if weight maintenance is a goal, and that's very important, we need to stay where we are, right? Now, if you're stage lean, I don't think weight maintenance is that important, right? We don't want to stay stage lean. That is not a place of health, that's not a place where we make progress, it's not a place where we get better, okay? But say maybe, you know, we dropped 30, 40 pounds, and we're, we're still not stage lean, we still have a decent amount of body fat, there's nothing that's gonna be interfering with hormonal regulations in terms of body fat stores, those kind of things. Now it's very important, we wanna make sure that we maintain that weight so that when we go into the next dieting phase, we can continue to chip away. So, that's one thing to consider, right? And then if they're gaining weight at that point, we most certainly don't wanna add more calories in um, if you know, we have those body fat stores that are in an okay place already. Now, maybe you are stage lean and you gain some weight and maybe we gain a little bit of body fat. Not the end of the world. We might still make some more increases depending where you're at, what your timeline's looking in your own individual situation, right? It's okay to have some body fat on. That's healthy. Um, <clears throat> so we want some body fat on in the off season. If we have another show coming up, we definitely don't want that. But Remember, it's all about your individual uh, place, your individual situation, okay? So that's one of those things that like, we have to really just look at it. Typically, when I go into a reversing time, I automatically assume <clears throat> that people are going to be a bit more lax and loose with the way in which they track their calories, the way in which they track their foods. Bikes come in, you know, we don't have that hard goal anymore. It's not like a show date or a diet end date or a goal weight, right? So now things just kind of become a little bit more lax. And so I tend to have that expectation when I give initial recommendations for new numbers in terms of calories and cardio because we can see that that does have an effect and an impact on how your weight and your measurements may respond. So I automatically assume that because of the fact that we're gonna be a little bit more lax, there's gonna be extra calories already accounted for uh, in that diet. So I don't want to add those extra calories into my recommendations. I add them into my recommendations. We still have bites, we still have those overage, we still have maybe some estimations that are off. Um, and uh, it, it can just add up pretty quick. So I tend to have the belief system that you know um, less is more at least in the beginning. What we'll see is they'll either respond very well, weight will probably still continue to drop, they'll still be in a little bit of a deficit, and then you know that they're hitting their numbers, you can be more comfortable adding in some more calories, dropping some extra cardio that next week, making those more aggressive changes, right? However, it's much harder to make those more aggressive changes, have extra body fat coming on, um, especially if you don't want it at this point in time, to try and go back the other way and then rein that in and bring it back in. So what I've found is Typically, I like to be on the more conservative side of things. So that way you can always reassess week to week, look at how your averages are changing, and make further changes based on that. So sorry about the camera issues today, guys, but I wanted to get a video out to you. I didn't want to let the sh shit show of my camera keep it from me. So that's it. That's today's question, guys. I hope you all have a great rest of the week, and I'll talk to you soon.